Hello everyone and welcome back to The Doctor's Garage here on YouTube. So in this video today, I'm going to be talking about my Land Rover Discovery 5. It is not with me now and I have a different car at the moment. So thanks for everyone that commented on my last video and watched it here on YouTube, which is all about my Discovery 5, the fact that it wasn't working. It had a problem with the starting, basically. So sometimes it would start, sometimes it would not start. And it was really unpredictable as to what exactly the cause was. A lot of you had some good suggestions in regards to what that might be. Um, but essentially it was really, really hit and miss. And I actually managed to get it back to Land Rover, uh, to my local dealer, which has been absolutely brilliant, to be fair. And they are fixing it so it basically needs a new wiring harness under the left front wheel apparently and there's some other sensor issues that were up with it so that's gonna get fixed which is fantastic news and since then they've given me a car so I'm in a different car today and it's really really surprised me because before Discovery 5 we had a Discovery 4 we had a Mercedes C-Class and I'm in something a little bit different today and I never thought I'd probably make a video saying this but this car has really, really surprised me as to how much I've enjoyed owning it, having it, running around in it. And it's really made me reconsider and think about the choices moving forward as to what other cars might be on the market and what might actually be a reasonable replacement for my Land Rover Discovery 5. So those who have watched the channel for a while will know I've had my fair share of problems with Land Rover in the time in regards to the car having issues, but Land Rover themselves have been very good. It's always been fixed and the car's been great generally when it's been working, but it has had quite a few um, issues that needed replacing on it. So I am not entirely sure whether I'm gonna be looking at going ahead for, the car's just done something there, looking going ahead for another Land Rover once this one is has done its time, which is it probably is about there now to be fair, and whether there might be an option for changing something a little bit different. Um, but yeah, let me show you this new car, which I think is really, really going to surprise you. So welcome to my 2022 Kia Sportage that I've been rolling around in since my Land Rover is getting fixed and Land Rover have run out of cars to give customers and therefore they've got a whole load of Kias and Nissans which they are giving to customers as kind of courtesy cars well their cars are getting fixed so this is what I've been in for the last three days and uh, I've got to say when I first picked it up I didn't really care to buy it so I was like give me any car I don't care as long as we've got a car to be able to go around in it doesn't have to be a Land Rover or a Jaguar I don't really care anything and they've given me this and at the start I was like oh it's a Kia it's a Kia Sportage yeah, I know people talk a lot about them, but I'm not gonna really think much of it in comparison to the Discovery. But you know what? This has actually been a real eye-opener for me because I've actually really enjoyed, enjoyed driving this. It's super easy to drive. It's got brilliant infotainment inside. The, the, like the cockpit, the displays is fantastic in this car. And I think Kia are doing some really interesting things with the look of their cars recently. I think the, the styling of Kias has really come on a lot. And even from the back as well, you can see it's a lot more interestingly styled than they previously have been. So I don't know what it is. It's a Kia Sportage. I don't know what spec it is, but it's pretty nice what they've given me, to be honest. Inside, I'll show you through here and I'll show you the driver's seat in a minute. Actually, really minimalist uh, interior much better infotainment than what's in my discovery and i can't help but think these cars cost i think this is about twenty five thousand, brand new with a seven year warranty and i'm all for a warranty having had a land rover for some time that actually it's really good value for money for a car that actually for town driving just getting around is a fantastic run around so i've actually enjoyed owning this i think it's super easy to drive the clutch is so light in it compared to other cars i've driven and it actually just zips around without any problem at all and yeah you know it's a kia it still feels a little bit plasticky there's still bits in it that aren't probably as polished as they could be but you know inside it's actually pretty cool i think it's quite a nice interior it's got all the uh, digital displays that you don't get um in, well, in my generation land rover certainly i know the newer ones are a bit better for that but this is more like a mercedes uh sort of interior it's like a curved screen and this has got loads of stuff on it so this has like you've got lane assist in it you've got heated steering wheel heated seats so many sort of mod cons that i would not expect in a kia to be honest and although this is a manual and my discovery is a, an automatic 
I've just enjoyed having this. I think it's been a really an eye opener for me because I've never really looked at cars like this, to be honest. I've always looked at like your German cars or your Land Rovers. And this has been actually really easy to get on with. Super simple, but just does the job. With a seven year warranty for 20 something thousand pound, you can't really go wrong for a car to nip around in town. It's made me think actually, Kia Sportage, yeah, okay. You know, it's not the biggest of cars. Still get a couple of car seats in the back, but it's not massive. But there are loads of other manufacturers that make cars similar to this that actually, it probably, could just a battery discharge there, which is interesting. Well, like my Discovery usually does. But I think I've had it on for a bit. It's out here. But yeah, there's a lot of, lot of cars in this kind of uh, group that actually could work for me. And maybe, maybe get a Defender 110 because I still think it's a great vehicle to own for like towing, doing bits, um, you know, general kind of being a bit more of a family workhorse and get something smaller like this for running around town in. So this is not electric, but I do believe Kia's do do electric cars and there's loads of other manufacturers that do electric cars. And I think the electric car market has really come on recently. Um, you've got the likes of Nissan, I think doing the Aria. You've got Kia's doing electric vehicles. You've got the mini electric. There's loads of quite cool, smaller electric cars and it could work to replace Discovery 5 with a smaller electric vehicle and and then let's keep the dream alive thinking maybe a Defender 110 as well for more of the heavy duty jobs and just kind of family trips really when the small car's not going to be enough. So I've been looking a lot into electric cars recently. I think really at the moment there's many electric cars that are big family cars that do electric well. Unless you're going to go for a plug-in hybrid option there's not many full electrics and uh, full electrics appeal to me at the moment for more kind of town driving so I've been looking at those quite a lot. So really interested to hear your thoughts if you do run a, run a smaller electric car, what's been your favorite and why? Why have you chosen that particular vehicle? Why has it worked for you? It could be quite a nice two car setup. And I'm quite open to um, to any of these other brands that I never really looked at before. So your Kia's and Nissan's, because I think they're doing some quite interesting stuff with particular newer electric vehicles. And this one has really opened my eyes to thinking actually, they're not as bad as probably I thought they were when I first, uh, first got told by Land Rover that they were gonna put me in a Kia while mine was getting fixed. So yeah, interesting for me to, uh, to sort of find out more about that. And I'd love to hear from you guys as to what you think would could work and what you guys have got and whether that's something that might be able to work for me. So my Land Rover Discovery is in Land Rover now. It's been there for the last few days. Uh, keep keeping in touch with them and seeing what's going on. And they're doing the wiring harness, as I mentioned. Also the back left lock on the door, I think, is had a few problems with one of the, I think it's intrusion sensor that goes on them. So that is a, uh, something that um, they are replacing. So yeah, a few things getting fixed and hopefully we'll get Discovery 5 back, it'll be working. And then maybe sell it, maybe change something different. Not really sure right now, but it's definitely, now it's 60,000 miles and think it's probably time to consider getting rid of it. So let me know you guys what you think at home. Interested to hear what you say as always. And uh, yeah, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. I have a lot of people watching this channel that are not subscribed, so subscribe, like this video, let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you guys very soon.